Okay, so let's put some pieces together. My claim is that we found these particles. CERN and Fermilab have been looking for them. And this goes way back to 2015, uh, 2013. So that's like nine years ago. Now, I think I got involved around 2015, somewhere 2016, somewhere on there, trying to work through the system and I ended up actually going to the University of Geneva in Switzerland to talk to him about focusing at these and, and creating the actual separation of the particles. I showed him all my work. So and then I see not too long after that they shut down the, the Large Hadron Collider and I, I understand that a big part of the upgrade was to make it focus like we did. Okay. Don Lincoln is showing them as two separate particles, which they can be, but their normal thing is to be attached together or to be in big balls where they actually create particles, which are we call them atoms, molecules, and so forth. This is literally split apart is the muon and electron neutrino, sterile muon and electron showers as shown down here. But prior to them splitting, they're glued together. They call them gluons. And I agree, they're glued together. And when the two of them glued together, glue on to another set of them, like that back-to-back -back bar magnets, they become light. Light does not burn into you. Light bounces because it's got two, two bumpers here. <laughs> Now, this only has one. It wants to burn into you. If you get hit with one of these, it's just this. It's electricity. It's static. It's lightning. It's electricity. You, you're getting them all the time. It's heat. Yes. All right, but it's not this. This is light. This, is, this will bounce. It does not stick. These here are when we split them apart by accelerating the light, which is not supposed to be able to be done. This is fission right here. This is fusion back here. Right there is absolutely raw, 100% unadulterated electron and neutrinos creating electron showers. That's all it's here. There's not a single taste of black in here. All the way around, yes, absolutely. And right over here, pew, slamming right back in. Exactly what they claim to have happen to these particles. Only when they do it, they explode them head on and they just get splashes of things going everywhere and they find these little bitty pieces and it's the smallest one they can find so they say, well, that's the tiniest one. However, we find a lot of them that look just like that and we find a lot of other ones that look just like this and we find a lot of other ones that look just like that. Yes, it's a particle zoo. When you get down to the very bottom, but every one of them is made out of these two particles. So all that exists. Okay, this goes kind of way back. This was from 2015 when the Russians created this black hole in space. They didn't know what they did. They still don't know. Now, I had contacted Don Lincoln. I copied him in on where I was trying to communicate with the cosmonauts or whoever it was they are over in Russia that had put up this video. Because I wanted to see what he had to say. And, I, and he was not too happy about that, I don't think. He poo-pooed it, let's put it that way. And I sort of figured, well, maybe he just doesn't like it that they're Russians. But I said, well, I have found the particles you found. I, this is what I think is the dark matter. It's collecting. I believe it is a black hole. And I believe this is what would happen in space, except it's in a container. And I tried to explain all these things and show my light experiments. By this time, everything was done, uh, and I had finished it up, and there was videos, a lot of them out there, that said um, light is, is dark energy moving through the vacuum of space, which there is no vacuum. There, it, all these particles go. These particles, just like this, nothing more than like this. These are ions that are attached to very, very fine micron-sized dust particles. The vacuum of space, which they call it, is completely saturated with light, obviously, and I have shown you light particles or well. It's also saturated with metals and all the rest. They know this is called a solar wind. Look it up. All kinds of different metals, iron and chromium and, you know, everything. 
It's all in, in tiny little bits and pieces, molecules. Yes, absolutely. But they're out there. They're all out there. And they, they're in such en enough of a quantity that those are metals. And they are the same smell as welding sticks. All right. When you weld something, you have a stick of metal. Or, well, it depends on what you're welding, what kind of a stick it is. And you shoot electricity through that stick, and it, it, it makes the other molecules go, and you, and you weld them together. And it depends on what kind of metals you're welding, whether it's iron or whatever it is. So all of those metals are in space. And how do I know that? Because when they come in out of space walks, when they go out to service, they come back in and they take their suit off and they say, it smells like steak. It smells like burning metals, like, like somebody was welding. So there's enough of that stuff out there that it gets on their suits and they can smell it. So it's not like it's no, there's nothing out there. And the rest is all, all light. Light is everywhere. Light is everywhere, and uh, the other particles that scrub off are these metals and dust particles, and I don't know how big they are, but they might get fairly good size. I have no idea. Well, we know we get asteroids and comets and all that business, but that's, those are the unusual ones. How big are those normal ones? Size of a BB? A lot of them like that? I have no idea. But it's time to look at this and understand this is the dark matter they're looking for. This is gravity. That's what it is. I just did that. And it is also, in space, a Bose-Einstein condensate. They, it, the, all the matter comes together and clumps together as the black one singular polarity, which is the black. All the white ones are trying to get into the black, but in this vacuum of space, well, in this case, it was a total vacuum. They injected these ionic particles, and there was a, the the barrier out here forces them to bounce. When they first put it in, it was boing, 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 and then it just congealed this into a ball. That's that's a black hole right there. All right, now see, there's the same particle, only it's a much more energetic particle, but it's the same particle. It's just spinning faster. And that's charging up, almost charged enough to flip. You see the white is in the front, the white is still in the front. It's going to go, the white will go in the back, that white will go in the front. So you have either an upspin or a downspin, basically, is what they call it. Blue is a sizzler. See it coming through here? Bzzz, and it starts slowing down. And then they start separating out. So light can accelerate, light can slow down. And you see, that it looks like there's only one particle, but by the time you get out here, you can see that there is two, two white spots and two black spots. All right, this is the one we can work with best. This is the red laser. It's just starting to show up here. No real good definition. Then they start to show up in the little boxes so we can actually see the particles themselves, which CERN sees. And the only reason we can see them in this configuration is because they're stacking up, getting ready to explode. They're gaining energy. Let's go with that. This one here has what I call an upspin. The, the glowy particle is up. Now it has a downspin. The glowy particle is down. Why? What happened from here to here? The up particle charged up going forward and flipped to the back to start to gain, to you know, because it's got a loose charge. This one came forward and is going to start to glow, and then it'll flip again. That's how they flip. They just almost like roll down the street. They keep charging, flipping, charging, flipping, charging, flipping, charging, flipping. So sometimes this one's up, sometimes this one's down. Simple as that. When it hits the Venturi, it's all bets are off. The white goes into shower mode, and the black slams the white through Adventure. All right, that was a fairly gentle wave in the beginning. The particle is magnetic, so it has a field around it, which bangs into every other particle, so it creates this a particle wave duality. The wave is pushing, is push to show, push to show. So as it comes through, we've accelerated that. That's acceleration. That's fission. That's fusion. This is a hundred percent raw 
electron neutrinos and the black surrounding it doesn't mind being next to each other. They'll get right on touch on top of each other. This is an enormous increase in energy. I think we can get free energy. And and I have a little bit of a design here. This is very simple. We could try it and see. If it, if it didn't work, well, what do you got to lose? They spend billions of dollars walking around in circles as far as I'm concerned. So here we have the laser. It's putting out these black and white particles. Blacks can't get through. They just can't get there. The white ones stack up there and a bang, 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 bang. With the black ones, get like a jackhammer. They come out of here, raw, raw energy. Bang, bang, bang with the black ones. The black ones are in with this. But they can't get through. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Out comes the white. Now, if we put a substrate here, which is something like this, to collect a, like a solar panel, you know, I hear Elon Musk screaming about free energy. I have never had anybody contact me back. I've tried. I, I, I'm pretty well shut off from the rest of the world. It's a, it's a problem because I was outspoken about a lot of things, and when they do that, somehow all of a sudden you, you, you're not heard by anybody for any reason whatsoever and we're, we're wasting all our time and not paying any attention to what I think is could be extremely productive and lead to free electricity all right it's, it's so simple it's just unbelievable you have a muon neutrino and electron neutrino the black fixed one the white point particle here they are right here electron neutrino muon neutrino Forget the bosons. The two of these together make a gluon, which are here right there, which we would have always called that an electron because that's the particle that is, is really electricity. But it con contains both the black and the white particle, these two together. So forget all that stuff. Two of these gluons make a photon. Once you get to the photon, that's the end of it. All the rest is just more and more and more and more and more particles in a ball. Bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Depends on how, and then it gets stable at certain points. But every single particle that you see on this table has a ton of extra particles it could be and still be the same particle. It's not just that whenever you hit iron, it's iron and that's it. No. You've got all kinds of different states of iron and oxidation levels and um, um, ions and isotopes. And they all have the same thing. They all have all kinds of isotopes. Hydrogen is not just one hydrogen. You've got hydrogen one, two, and three. And then you've got little bits of, of fluctuation between the sizes of even them. All right? not, not a single thing on this chart is correct because hydrogen itself is 1835 particles, not one. So forget all that other stuff. That's just little bits and pieces of the zoo that they can see, and they see a lot of it, so they say, oh, this is strange. Oh, this is down. Oh, this is bottom. No, oh, this is charm. No, oh, this is top. This is up. This is this. This is that. It, and, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, the zoo. Okay, so let's take it from the top. That is just a normal red laser interfering with all of the other particles it has to push its way through. That's push to shove. The little white particles have a, a blow to them just like the, this one here. Only this is much more impactful than what it's pushing through. Now, when we created the Venturi, which is tuned to only allow the white through, it accelerated that wave and right here the particles divided. They came back together over here. When they came back together, they came back as Higgs fields. You see them? This is the little white spritz coming out, which are these little white... This region right here is this region right here until it hits the black particles, and then they start to reform. I'll show this in a little more detail in a minute. Uh, this particle here is just stunningly, I don't know. I believe that's a reverse spinner which one of the Higgs collided with another Higgs. This, as you know, is the photons. And that's just the blue showing that light can accelerate, as you see in the red, and it can slow down, as you see in the blue. Now, something else you have to take away from this is these black ones, they are just, they are just driving themselves into the white. They, they just want to collect, and they don't care about being right on top of each other. Look. 
They can have globs of them. They couldn't care less. The white is why they're spraying like this, because they're pushing and shoving and vibrating each other like crazy to coming out of here. And they're just brilliantly, you know, vibrationally convulsing. <laughs> That's all you can say. That is a, that's that's an incredible amount of energy pushing to shoving of electrons. Because that's all energy is is pushing and shoving electron to electron. That is what's called a cashmere effect. And if I slam my hand into that or this or anything that is hits anything else, is is this identical? Only we're really hammering. Right. The cashmere effect works on, you know, you bound like this. Well, this is absolutely forced through, 100% forced. I think there's a lot of energy there. All right. We have seen that the black particle is a fixed particle. It's coming through here with the white ones. But at this point, it becomes disassociated. They're no longer attached to the white. And the reason is, is there is a venturi here which is a restriction that only allows the white through. It's a little bit of a challenge in engineering, but it is, it's a tuned venturi, and the blacks say, I can't get through there. I'm a fixed particle. I'm too big. They said, well, get the hell out of the way. I said, no. Boom, 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 because this is pulse laser. So the blacks, I think, are squirting the whites out of here. In other words, the white's not just flowing through here by accident. The white is bang getting banged through there. That's what we got here. Now, the blacks can't go there. Think about this carefully now. The black is very, very, very close to the white. It's not just laying out here in the middle of the woods. It's always hanging in here trying to get a hold of some white ones. That's its total mission in life, is to reattach with these white particles. You see it over there? You see this? Every one of them wants to grab a hold of a white particle. And it ha happens right from right at here. All right, that's the distance from the venturi where the light reattaches to itself. But if it can grab into something on the edges, it grabs them. All right, the reason it can't get to these ones is there's so many particles in here shaking back and forth. Get away, you don't get away, you get away, you get away, you get away, you get away. There's no room for these guys. Once these slow down enough to where these guys can create a trail between each other, which they call interference patterns, it's not interference. This is repulsion. This whole strip here says, I'll stay in my lane, you stay in your lane. Let the no man's land come between. And that's what happens. This is where most of the stuff is coming through. Because it's coming through sometimes this way, sometimes that way. Most comes through the middle, and then you get the interference patterns. And the further out they get, the more they start to hook together. By the time they finish hooking together, they're back into regular light. But right here, right there, if the, what they say is correct, and if you say make a muon and electron neutrino, you can create trillions of electron volts, where it only requires millions to create this, to create trillions. So if it takes millions and you end up with trillions, to me, that sounds like free energy. And if Elon Musk and all the rest of these guys really, really want this, they should be talking to us. I don't want anything. I couldn't care less about money. This is about getting the technology to save the Earth, if it's even possible anymore. This was seven years ago. I've been showing this, and I don't. I got to think. I, I I can't even imagine it be looked at anymore. Somebody's going to have to step up because I I've, you know, Don has sort of disassociated himself from me a hundred percent, and and so somebody else is going to have to approach him and say, w why aren't you guys looking into what Roger presented? Electron flood theory solves everything. And it's, it's too simple for them, but it's true. And I've shown it. I'm not just making guesses and making a bunch of flowery statements. I'm a material scientist. This is a material world, and I am a material guy. Okay, so as I showed you, we seem to have found something similar to what Don Lincoln is looking for. I don't mean to offend anyone. I just want to be 
be heard and be and, and and discuss it. That's all I'm asking for. I could be very, I could be very respectful. You know, if we can just have an open discussion, and I would really appreciate it, Don. And I think you know, I would at least learn something. I'm sure, and maybe everybody could learn something. Right here, among the most interesting astronomical bodies is the black hole, but it's one of the most misunderstood in this video. Fermi lab Don Lincoln debunks some common misconceptions about black holes and also explains some important truths. Well, I have some important truths that I'd like to discuss. Now, I can't comment. Now, maybe you can. This is the, this is the video. It's called, What are Black Holes? Maybe you could ask them to, to, to check my stuff. I they certainly won't respond to me.